Okay, so this is MAT 154 pre-calculus college algebra, 6.6. .6. We're going to be solving radical equations, and we're going to start off with the one right here. Okay, this is on page, if you have the book, page 399. If not, you can just kind of follow along. Okay, so the whole idea, there's a couple, couple of basic steps we use on all these problems. And the, the first basic step is to isolate the square root as much as you can, if possible. Let me see if I can focus a little bit better. Uh, well, that doesn't seem much better, but as good as we can get it. Okay, so... Um, Let's bring this three to the other side and make it a little bit easier to work the problem. I have three here and we get seven. So the square root of X, the square root of X equals seven. So that, that's usually the first step, isolate. So let's put that down. Isolate radical. And the second step that's important is to square both sides or raise it to a power. You, we're working with square roots, but if you were working with cube roots, you would cube both sides. So um, I'm just going to put raise to power. But in most cases, we're just squaring both sides. So we're going to square this side and we're going to square the other side. What that does is when you square a square root, you just get the radicam without the square root. So the squaring undoes the square root. So let me um, cross that off and cross that off. And so you just get the X. And of course, on the other side, you get 49. And that's our answer. So the square root of 49, 7, minus 3, 4. Well, this one was a fairly easy one to do, but, but you can kind of see these are your two basic steps. Then from there, you have to use step three is use algebra tools. All the tools you've learned, you want to use them. Okay, let's try another one. See what we got here. A little bit more. Okay, well, here's one. The square root of x equals negative 3. Okay, a square root, we're, we're dealing with real numbers here. A square root cannot equal a negative number. It has to be a positive number. Okay, so we're looking for the primary roots, which are positive. We, we can't take the square root of x. Uh, it won't check. The square root of 9, this would be 9. The square root of 9 is not negative 3, it's positive 3. So when you have a square root and it's equal to a negative number, uh, there is no solution. Now, if it was a cube root, that would be okay. But on, on even indexes, you can have an, a, a negative solution if you're looking for real answers. So there's no solution. We're looking for real solutions, real numbers. Okay. All right. So let's try one a little bit harder, but not super hard. Let me see if I can find one that's not too bad here. Let's try this one. Um, let's suppose we had the Q root of X plus five equals two. So our first step would be to isolate, which they are. The they, uh, cube root is on one side and numbers on the other. We've got them separated. And then we're just going to raise it to the power of three. So it's just that simple. We're going to cube both sides. It's just the index and the power have to match up. 
when they do, this cancel out, and we just get x plus five as a without the radical, and then this would be eight. And then we bring the five to the other side, and x is three. And you can double check it. You put the three in here, three plus five is eight. The cube root of eight is two. So I'm gonna lead you back to the, now I, I'm working right on the original problem. I guess maybe that's not such a great idea, but but uh, it saves a little bit of writing. All right, so that was a problem out of the homework. Now let's try one that's a little bit more difficult. So here we have a problem, x minus seven equals two times radical x plus one. Now, normally, normally we'd like to get rid of this two just to get the radical all by itself. But if I put this x minus seven over two, that's, that's gonna make the problem even worse. So that wouldn't really help me a whole lot. I'd have a fraction here and a little bit more hand, difficult to handle. They are isolated. So this is the, as isolated as you're going to get. You're still going to have this too, but it won't be too bad. So now the next step, isolate, next step would be to square both sides. So let's, let's square the uh, right-hand side. Let's square this radical. We do have to square the two because it's outside. But then this would still stay x minus one because the two cancels out the radical. So we'll put that in the parentheses. Now on the, on the left-hand side, we can either do the square double square, or if you're not great at doing the square double square, you can write the x minus seven down twice x minus seven squared is x minus seven times x minus seven and do a FOIL, x squared minus seven x minus seven x plus 49, F O I L, and then combine the middle terms. You could do that on scratch paper or something like that if you're not, but if you learn to square double square, it's a lot faster. You're going to square the first term. You're going to multiply x times negative 7. Just think of your timesing these together. That's negative 7x. And then you're going to double it, negative 14x. So it's, it's 2 times this. 2 times x times negative 7, negative 14x. And then you're going to square the last term, negative 7 times negative 7, which you sign as a positive 49. So that way you don't have to do all this work. You know, you can kind of do it in your head. Square, multiply together, double, square. Square, double, square. So it's, it's just a little faster, but this is not totally wrong. I mean, you know... Uh, sometimes you forget to square double square. Okay, let's distribute out to four. The four times the X and the four times the one, right? And because we have a quadratic term here, whenever you have a power of two, it's quadratic, we're gonna have to bring this four X over to the other side and set it equal to zero. So minus four x, you know, adding a negative four x to both sides, minus four, adding negative four, and we end up with x squared minus 18 x uh, plus 45 equals zero. Now there's several ways you can do it. You can do the x method or trial and error. However, you used to have factoring this down. Don't forget to put the square here.
So I'm going to use uh, the X method. They multiply to give you 45, they add up to negative 18. So it looks like it's going to be, um, well, it, at first it looked like nine times five, huh? But nine and five isn't going to give me 14. So it looks like more like three times 15. Three times 15, and they both would have to be negative to give me a positive 45. If I multiply them, I get 45. If I add them, I get negative 18. So when I was first looking at this problem, I was thinking, oh, okay, nine times five. But it's really gonna be X minus three times X minus five, 15, excuse me, equals zero. So this is the, the algebra part of the problem. You know, we're gonna use those factoring skills that you have. And then of course, we're gonna set each one of these to zero and solve. Using that zero principle, the whole answer is zero. One of these has to be equal to zero. And then we're we'll bring the three over, you know, save a little bit of time, add three to both sides, add 15 to both sides. Well, then we would want to check this back into the real problem because sometimes um, one of these numbers might not check. So three minus seven is a negative four. Chances are this is not going to check because uh, let's go back to the original. If we go back to the original problem, this would give me a negative answer. And uh, when I put a three in here, I get a four, four times two, two times two is four, but four doesn't equal negative four. It equals a positive four. See, good chance that this radical is not going to equal a negative number. When I put the 15 in here, I get an eight. 15 plus one is 16. The square root of 16 is four. Four times two is eight. So eight equals eight. So this answer, even though it, you know you worked it successfully and everything, will not check. It's not valid. So the only answer to this problem, and sometimes they do both check. Usually, the smaller answer has a tendency not to check over, you know, doing these for quite a while. I noticed that the smaller number usually doesn't check; the big number usually does. But sometimes they both will. The quick check would be that this came out negative right away, right here, which is a giveaway that it probably won't check. You know, I mean, it could, it is possible, but not very probable. Okay, so our answer to this problem is just 15. Okay, so let's let's just review this one real quick, just to go over it real fast. Isolate. Then square both sides, calculate a little bit here, try to get that, that um, in this case, we cube both sides. Uh, we got it down to this point, and then we had to square both sides because we still had a square root. And, and I mean, here, here was the problem. I'm looking at this one right here, getting myself confused. Okay, so we isolated, we squared both sides, and then we have sometimes a quadratic, and then we have to, you know, sometimes it even gets worse that you have to use the quadratic equation and all that kind of junk. But most of the time, these will factor. And you get a nice answer. Well, let's use the back side. What the heck? Okay, we won't throw it away. Let's try another one. Let's see if we got a. Uh, another one, they, they have a graph in the book. We don't want to do that. Okay, here's one. This one's a little tough, too. I'm going to keep the original problem here so you can kind of see it. Maybe we can use that. That's okay. I'm going to isolate. 
So I'm going to bring this five to the other side. Okay, I've separated them. I'm going to square both sides, similar to the last one we just did. Right here, forgot to write the square on that side. Uh, we're going to square both sides, and I want to do the square double square. So square, negative 5 times x, negative 5x, doubled, negative 10x, square. Negative 5 times negative 5. This will always be positive. Equals. And here I want to square the radical. So that just gives me x plus 7. So very similar to the one we just did. Now what I'm going to do is move the x. Make that a minus 1x and move to 7, minus 7. Add that to both sides, set it to 0. So watch out for your signs when you move these, you know. Sometimes you can get stuck because let's 7 from 25, 18, huh? So this is plus 18 equals 0. And watch your signs right here. So they multiplied it give you 18, they add up to negative 11. Nine times two would add up to 11. And again, this is another one where they're both negative. So this is gonna be x minus nine and x minus two. This is just a little display of your work, so you can kind of see. They multiply. It's kind of a double check. Yeah, they're going to give me 18. When I add them up, they're going to give me negative 11. And then I um, can solve each one, set them to 0. x is 9. x minus 2 equals 0. x is 2. So I've got my two solutions. I'm going to check my 2. Well, it could be 2. Let's see. 2 would work there. 2 plus 7 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 doesn't equal 2. So again, the small number didn't seem to work. Let's try the 9. 9 plus 7 is 16. The square root of 16 is 4. That will check. But it looks like the 2 doesn't check again. Going back to this problem right here. Even though it is a positive number, it's just that because it is five, it's not going to check. Okay, so again, the nine does not work, and the two, uh, two doesn't work. Let's see. So two does not work. All right, how about a cube root one? We we did one. Okay, so we don't need to do that one. Let's try even more challenging. Are you ready for the super challenge? This is the toughie. Well, this one is pretty tough, <clears throat> but this one's even worse. So we have x plus three times plus x plus 5, radical, radical, equals 4. Now, on this particular problem, let me tell you, you, you want to separate these two radicals if you can. Because if you don't, and I can tell you by experience, you're just going to start going around in circles on this problem. You're going to think you're doing it right, and then you're going to start find out that you got a big old mess in about 60 steps, and you still haven't got to the answer. So you always want to try to isolate them. Even if you can't, they aren't perfect, you want to separate them from each other. They're kind of like cats and dogs. You want to separate. So I'm going to bring the x, this radical, over to the other side, but it's going to be 4 minus that radical. Okay. 
it didn't matter which one you took to the other side. You could have brought this one to the other side, just so you separate them. Now we're going to square both sides. Separate, you know, isolate, separate, whatever you want to call it, and square. Well, this is pretty easy to square. You've got a radical in your square and you get the radican. So that, that's pretty easy. These just undo each other, each other. So you just get without the radical. But here, a little bit of a mess. So we're going to try to square double square on it. You can do the uh, whole foil, but even that's going to be hard. 16. Multiply these together. Now, when you multiply them together, um, let me do this with a pencil. You're kind of thinking that you're multiplying this times this. You're just multiplying those. You're going to get a negative. You're going to get four, and you're going to double that. So that would be eight. Radical x plus 4. And then you're going to square the last term. So this is multiplying them together and double. Double to 4 and multiply. And then square plus x plus 4 squared is going to be radical squared is going to be just x plus 5. What did I say? 4 x plus 5. So square multiply together and double the eight, double the four, make it an eight, and then square. So it's, it's a, you know, it's, it's a little tricky when you first start it out. Square, multiply, double, square. Okay, so what happened here? Well, what happened is we still have a radical. So we have to isolate this new radical. So we're gonna bring everything that isn't a radical to the other side. Let's bring over the 16, that'd be minus 16. Let's bring over the x plus five. Uh, now, when I bring over this x plus five, well, let's bring it over one at a time. Let's bring over the x, that'll be a negative x. And then let's bring over the five, that would be a negative five. That might make more sense, huh? Don't bring the whole thing over, just bring over the x negative x and the 5, negative 5. So what happens here is I have, this all adds up, these are all negative, huh? The x is canceled. I've got negative 8, negative 24 equals, now I brought over the 16 and I brought over the x and I brought over the 5. But normally if you had a negative answer here, you wouldn't have a solution. But remember, we still have this negative 8 in front. So now what I would want to do is divide off that negative 8, try to isolate the radical a little bit more, and also it makes it a little bit easier to work the problem, huh? So now we got 3 equals this square root. So now we still have to, we squared it once, but we're going to have to square it again. So sometimes you, sometimes you have to do it up to three times. So we're going to square both sides again. They're isolated. That's what we were trying to do. And we get nine equals. And of course, this just gives me the radican. And now it's pretty easy. Huh? We bring over the five minus five. Don't get in a hurry where you see the 9 and 5 and put down 14, and that would be 4. So let's see if it works. 4 minus 3 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. 4 plus 5 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. 1 plus 3 is 4. So it does check. But it would be... I, I suppose you could get it by guessing, you know, but this is a systematic way of doing it. Um, so we tried to isolate it as much as we could. We squared it, had to do a square double square, isolated again, get rid of even the eight, squared it again. So squared and then squared again. So usually if there's two radicals, um, 
I was the two radicals are uh, on opposite sides. Uh, usually you have to um, do this kind of work. Let me show you one that might come up. I don't see one in your book, but sometimes you have a situation like this. And I, I'm just making this problem up, so it might not come out real nice. Maybe it's equal to zero. So here you would separate the two radicals. But sometimes you have a radical square root, in other words, on one side, a square root on another side. Well, then that's a fairly easy problem. You're just going to square both sides. And I just, maybe I should have made this a 2x, huh? Let's make this a 2x plus 3 so it comes out. I was just making up this problem, and not a very good one. So now if I bring over the x, otherwise it would have been 0. 2x take away x is x and 8. So these are fairly easy. If there's just a radical and a radical, it's when you have a radical and then you have a number with that radical. That's when they get difficult. If it's just a radical and a radical, they're, they're easy to do. But when you when you have this situation here, all right, let's try one more of those. Here we have a 2x minus 5 radical. And these could have cube roots too, you know. One thing about math is <clears throat> no matter how hard the problem is, we can always make it harder. Caitlin, are you there, Marquez? Do you understand how to submit your work? Okay. Worry about it later. Okay. So I got 2x minus 5. I got 1 plus x minus 3. What do you think? Square, huh? Square both sides. I'm, I'm going to write this separate so you can see the original problem. And square this side, square the other side, but you you could do this on the original, you know. Go ahead and try squaring this, and see, let's see if we get it right. I am not in a messy mood today. I'm like making a mess out of everything I touch. You ever have one of those things? I don't have to even touch. Look at the papers even. Sometimes. Uh, Got to straighten that sort of. Okay, we're going to square. Two x minus five, and then on this side, did you have <coughs> square, multiply together and double? Oh, still a radical, and then square. <clears throat> Is that what you had? One plus two radical x minus 3 plus x minus 3. It's kind of tricky when you're when you're working with these things, you know, that square double square. You could also do it the long way, but I tell you the truth, that isn't much easier when you do a foil on these and they got something like this. It's, you know, it's not really easy to foil those either. 
All right, so let's start bringing over things. Let's bring over the one minus one. Let's bring over the X minus X. Let's bring over the three plus three. Bring these over, cross them off. So I have, looks like I ended up still with an X um, minus three equals two times X minus three radical. Pretty messy, huh? So I didn't end up as nice as the last problem. Yeah, I ended up with kind of a, a mess here. So I'm gonna to have to start all over again. I can't really get rid of the two. I'm gonna square both sides. So I'm gonna square both those sides. I, I wrote this down so you could see that I was squaring it. Okay, so now I got to do a square, double square again. Square, double, square. And I've got to do a, uh, just a, I do have to square the outside number. And this just gives me parentheses x minus three. Finally, it comes out as a whole number or a whole expression. Going to distribute that. And set, set it equal to zero because it's quadratic. Minus 4x plus 12. So what do I have now? I got x squared. Fortunately, you know, they could get worse. They could have a number in front. Negative 10x plus 21. So these aren't too hard to factor. It looks like seven and three. We double check it. 21, negative 10. Notice that they've been both coming out negative, so which is kind of weird. Uh, this has always been coming out positive. It doesn't always have to be that way. So this looks like negative seven, negative three. Checks, checks. equals zero. <clears throat> Almost there. So now we got to set each one equal to zero and solve. And of course, some of you probably have recognized by now if it's x minus seven, it's going to come out a positive seven. Bring the seven to the other side. You know, if it was minus three, it's going to come out a positive three. You can use some shortcuts. I'm just writing out the steps down so you can see them. So sometimes these are not the most fun to, to check. Let's go back to the, I'm trying to figure out where was the original problem way up here, huh? So se, two times seven is 14, minus five is nine, the square root of nine is three. I'm just gonna jot that down. On this side, it was seven minus three is four, the square root of four is two, two plus one is three. So that, that looks okay. How about three? Uh, three times two is six. Six minus five is one. Square root of one is one. Uh, three minus three is zero. The square root of zero is zero. Plus one is one. So here's a, a situation where they both did check. You got two answers to this problem. Both of these are valid answers. So, you know, you kind of can run the check in your head or if you got a book, you can look at the back of the book and Double check it that way, but you know, so if you only get one answer, you know one of them didn't check. But you can see this is this is the most complicated of the the bunch right now, is because you had a had a number that you couldn't you couldn't do anything with. You square both sides. Finally got it down to this point, but then you had to square both sides again, and usually you end up with something quadratic, and then you got to solve it. So they are kind of challenging. Um, so in the book, they have some steps. Let's see if we were using the same thing. Isolate one of the radical terms. Use the principle of powers. In other words, square or cube both sides. 
If a radical remains, perform step one and two again, which we did, and check possible solutions. So we were basically following your steps. You know, we, we basically isolated, square both sides. Sometimes you have to square again, and then you have to use your, your algebra, your factoring skills and whatever skills you need to bring to the table. Uh, let's see, they got a couple more here. <clears throat> well, here's one with a minus. So let's, let's try one of those, see what happens on that. I'll try one last one here just to... On uh, 405, they have an application uh, to this uh, thing. So you could, you could actually see that sometimes you might use it more or less in a... Uh, a formula type driven problem. We do use radicals quite a bit in calculus. So that's, and we do use that square double square quite often. And so those are important skills. Uh, what do you think we should do? Well, let's leave this one alone. Let's uh, bring this to the other side. Let's put our equal here and bring this over. That'll be a positive. That'll get rid of this negative sign. And we'll write this as minus one. <clears throat> so I'll bring this over also. Sometimes it's easy to forget about changing that sign. And then we're gonna square both sides. square. And here I'm going to do the square. Multiply these together, that would be a negative. Well, sometimes it's easier just to double the number, huh? That makes it I'm kind of thinking this as a negative two times this radical. and then square to negative one. Boy, that's a mess, huh? Okay, so let's bring things over to the other side. Uh, two X, come on over. Two, come over. And one, come over. Ooh. Hmm. So I have a negative x minus 1 equals a negative 2 radical 2x plus 2. Is that what they came up with? Or did I do it the hard way? So I guess they didn't bring the one over. So we're doing ours a little bit different from the book, but we'll see if we come up with the same solution. I think I did mine a little bit harder way, but yeah. <clears throat> my fault. So uh, let's, let's try it the way it is anyhow. Uh, this was a plus one, right? When I brought this over, this was a minus one. But when I squared it, it became a plus one, brought it over. Okay, well, let's see what happens when I square both sides. Okay, so square, this will become positive, negative times negative. Multiply these together, that would, and times two, that'd be a negative one X, that'd be a negative two X, and then square plus one equals square, that'd be four times two X plus two. <clears throat> so let's hopefully I'm doing it right. It's kind of yeah, maybe did it the hard way, but it's good to see you can do it different ways. Bring the eight x to the other side. Bring the eight. 
looks like I have x squared minus 10x minus 7. Is that what they had come up with? They had a 6x. Hmm. <clears throat> so somewhere I hear I have a mistake. See, this was a <clears throat> square multiplied together and square right over to the side minus one square multiply double square square I'm looking at the solution in the book. Oh. That is 2x plus 2. What did they do to that 2x plus 2? They didn't have this as a negative x. They had this as a positive x. <clears throat> See, they, they have a 4x plus 8. They have this part, but this is a 4x plus 8. What did I... I may have to analyze this one a little bit more. What I'm doing wrong, I can't seem to find my mistake. Um, brought this over, brought this over, brought the one over. Negative two squared is four. I'm trying to figure out how they get this down to a rather than an 8x plus 8, they had a 4x plus 8. <clears throat> trying to think how they came up with that. Because this, this won't factor. has to be a six here, see. I can't seem to find my mistake. <clears throat> Brought these over. I mean, I did it in a different way, but it still should work. Um, Brought the two x plus two square. Multiply together in double. And then square plus one. Brought this over, negative 2x. Brought this over, negative 2. Brought this over, negative 1. Uh, here we get a negative 2x. 
two, give me four. Oh, I think I see my mistake. Square, double, but right here, see when I doubled them, when I doubled right here, that was a negative two times a negative X gave me a positive two X. In other words, I had a negative X times a negative one times a two. Right there is my mistake. You know, sometimes it is hard to find your mistakes. So right here, when I did the square double square on this, I squared this, it would have been negative X times negative one times two, which would give me a positive two. So now this should be a negative six X and that's what they had. All right. I knew there was a mistake somewhere. You could do it this way, but yeah, because of the, all these negatives here, you know, a negative times a negative is going to give you a positive. Okay, so my mistake. So then this would be a negative seven. This would be a negative six. It has to be seven and one. I need a negative six or a negative seven, huh? So this is going to be x minus seven and x plus one. Set those equal to zero. X is seven. X plus one equals zero. X is negative one. And sometimes it is frustrating when you can't find your mistake. Now, uh, double checking, I'm not going to take the time to double check, but it said that both these answers did check. So they both check. So, yeah, right here is when I did that square. Because of all these negatives, it wouldn't be a bad idea to write that down right there, huh? Negative x times negative 1 times 2 for the double part in the middle. And that would give us a positive 2 rather than a negative 2, which gave me a negative 6. Because... Because the way it was, it was unfactorable. So you knew there was some kind of mistake in the problem. All right, it, it happens. Well, you know, and that's uh, one thing about math is sometimes you, ha you know, it, it is frustrating, but sometimes you have to go back at least and try to find that error, you know? Uh, and I know sometimes it can take, it, it's very difficult to find your own mistakes, but sometimes it's necessary. All right. Well, I hope this helped, you know, these will be a little bit more challenging problems than you've had before. So you're using a lot of skills, a lot of algebra skills, which is kind of fun. This is the, the good part of algebra where you're starting to learn new things and, and doing new skills and, or brushing up on old skills. All right, well, have a good day. I'm gonna, first of all, I have to, I can't do that, let me, I messed up here. Good. I kind of messed up something, but I think we'll be okay. All right, have a good one.